Louisville 7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. There's some things they just leave, they should leave alone and not mess with. And copy and paste on a laptop is one of it. Michael, this Microsoft thing that, that I'm using, which, suck, which sucks, by the way. Blasphemy. Using Microsoft products on, no, actually, no. Microsoft makes good uh, products for Windows, I mean, for Macs. It sucks. Are you using Word? I'm trying to copy and paste something and send it to somebody. And here's, you know, here's the thing. When you're using a normal computer, you just like go copy and paste. But Microsoft won't let you do that because they are Apple. Microsoft. No, Apple Apple will. won't let you do it, whoever. Sure they will. You have to hit Control-C, Control-D, and it never works. It's just, you oh, hit Control-C on, on Windows. It's just so frustrating. <laughs> Ours are Get command. off my lawn. We command. Max <laughs> command. <laughs> Don't poop in the yard. You'll mess it up. That's exactly right. You young people today. <laughs> and your Macs and your Apples. <laughs> See that white box in front of you, Henry? It's a computer. Uh, it's easy. One of these days, it's going to I'll be a pile of rubble here in the middle of the studio. Well, don't do that because I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Welcome in. It's uh, five minutes after eight. There's no doubt about it. I'm set in my I'm set in my ways. But when you learn on a regular computer, and then you got to go to this thing here. Just to copy and paste. I mean, what's wrong with just hitting copy and then paste? Well, your problem is your problem is you're not editing video and doing pictures. That's that's Mac. Well, you're, th- you're doing Windows lame stuff. It threw me for a loop when uh, Apple's didn't have a, a right click on their mouse. They just had the, the yeah, single click. Yeah, exactly. But the other thing too, I finally have you learned how to do stuff on my iPad. But when you got the when you got the laptop, it's totally different. So you got to learn how to use three different systems. What's up with this? Can't be the same. Won't sell if it is. I'm 60 years old for crying out loud. I cannot do these things. Well, do what you do. Do what you do normally. Paper and pencil. <laughs> Shut up, Michael. Nobody likes you. Or not like you used to do when you were kids. Stone tablet and uh, you know the big, the big stuff. Big <laughs> tink, tink, stuff. Tink. You know, every now and then he's he's. Amusing. He's never funny, but he sometimes is amusing. <laughs> but always funny looking. <clears throat> All right, this hour, we're going to do another contest. It's um, it's our Carolina Panthers trivia this hour. And we've got a $25 gift card to University Chop House this hour. How about that? We're just giving away food left and right. Tomorrow, we'll have the Love Genius it. Quiz. We'll give away trips. Love it. But uh, this morning, I stand by. Uh, the Panthers have the Rams, I believe. Correct. Go Rams! On uh, you like Whoa. the Rams? You Saint, like the- St. Louis fan? Really? My whole family's from uh, Missouri out there, so I was pretty much raised Blues, Cardinals, and Rams. They're awful, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Aren't they though? <laughs> they 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 put the put, took the wood to the uh, Houston Texans last yes, weekend. Yes, they did. So. But many teams have. Houston, we Texans, exactly. Houston Texans are worse than awful. So are the Jaguars, which we beat them too. But it's yeah. the little things when it comes to me. I mean, come yeah. on. <laughs> well, look, the Panthers need to keep winning. I mean, they, you know, it's like they go out and score 35 points and win. And then six. One week, and then they go back and they can't score but six. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you just don't, you know, I heard Logan talking about it on a show Monday night. You know, he, he is such a Cam Newton fan. And so I'm trying to be because, <laughs> you know, Logan knows I don't. But, I, you know, I just, God, I just. But you see how good he can be, though, when he's playing well. He can be so good. All right, so stand by. Your chance to win a $25 gift card to University Chop House this hour, where you guys were on a Friday night. By the did you did you have dinner at the Chop House? Uh, no, no, no. The lights went out. Remember? Oh, that's right. What was getting... the deal? I was out of town Friday night, but my wife was um, actually on a step ladder, painting in in a uh, in a closet. I think, and Hank... she she called me and said. The lights are out all over town. I called I called your son, Hank, and I said, uh, what is happening right now? What is going on? Yeah. And uh, he said, what do you mean? We're fine. I said, we have no light. No one has lights anywhere up and down Greenville Boulevard. Yeah. Yeah. And he was just like, what? He's like, what? I got to go. <laughs> just hung up. Right. It was crazy. But no, uh, I found out last night, uh, Tony Cannon, the GM at GUC, told me that uh, some lines got crossed at the substation. Um, 
that they're working on, and it just cut out power for about five minutes to 40,000 people. Some lines got crossed. Yeah, lines got crossed. Got, you know, How about them apples? Wrong, wrong outlet. All right, so... Uh, a three-prong. Uh, two stand prong. by your chance to win two tickets to Bank of America Stadium. These are expensive tickets. They're good seats, too. For Saturday's 1 o'clock kickoff with, uh, with the Rams. That's the Panthers and the Rams, and we're going to give away two tickets courtesy of University Chop House coming up later this hour. We Last hour, we talked about the Redskins and the controversy that Bob Costas started with his controversy. By the way, why, why don't they just give Costas the 9 o'clock slot on, uh, <laughs> on MSNBC? They've given all the other New York liberals. I mean, think about the people who've had that 9 o'clock slot on MSNBC. It started with Donahue, for crying out loud. Phil Donahue was the first guy to have that. And then they gave it to Keith Oberman, and there was that one. Um, there was that one period of time where Rita Crosby, remember Rita Crosby, who I've always wondered how does she ever become a TV news person, because I swear she reminds me of somebody you'd meet in a laundromat. <laughs> Get an extra quarter. I got to tell you about those Republicans. By the way, can I borrow a quarter? I'm trying to dry my clothes. Rita Crosby, <laughs> she was good. She was good on MSNBC, and now they've got now they've got Re Rachel Mandow on there. Why don't they just give that to Costas? Mandow. He wants to be a political liberal commentator. Give Costas the nine o'clock hour on MSNBC. Yep, and he's done that before. He did that with the gun gun control. He did the gun control thing uh, earlier, and then uh, Saturday uh, Sunday night halftime. He's it wasn't he sitting in. The stadium in Washington was that game in Washington or was it in Dallas? Yeah, he was he was in the stadium. So he's in Washington and in, 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 uh, he's a guest of the Washington Redskins and he's in there saying it's time for the Washington Redskins to change their name because Redskins is offensive and that set off an entire conversation this morning and I've been getting texts and emails and stuff from people who don't. I got an email too. Actually, that. one of our listeners sent the letter or a copy of the letter that Dan Snyder wrote to Redskins fans. And he makes some great points in what here. Is it, what does he wanted, say? I wanted to read two of them. It said, uh, Snyder says, on the inaugural Redskins team, four players and their head coach were Native Americans. The name was never a label. It was and continues to be a badge of honor. In 1971, the late George Allen consulted with the Red Cloud Athletic Fund located on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota and designed their emblem on the Redskins helmet. So it goes. So down. the Indians actually, the, the, the Indian tribe actually designed the, uh, yeah. how about that? Yeah. You know, here's the thing. I don't hear the Indians screaming about it. I just hear the liberals. Is that true, or have there been some Indian groups that have come out and said, we want you to change it? I think there have been some, yes. But, you know, somebody made the, 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 uh, the, the, the point this morning that, uh, you know, words today mean something different than they used to. Randy just texted me and says, talk about changing meaning. Say shag nowadays and see what you bounce home with. To me, it's still carpet. <laughs> Steve uh, <laughs> texted me and said, Utah is named for Ute Indian tribe. I didn't know the We're going to change that? Indian tribe. Yeah. Uh, Braxton uh, just emailed me and said, calling someone a redskin has been, has been and can be derogatory. Neither Oklahoma nor Chowan have ever been or ever will be defa defamatory. Do you expect your listeners to think? Let me read that one again. He's taking the position that the Redskins is... Uh, this is the first one of our listeners that's taken the position they should change the name. Calling someone a Redskin has been and can be derogatory. Neither Oklahoma nor Chihuahua have ever been or will be defamatory. I think he's taking a shot at me. He says, and, your, and you expect your listeners to think? Thank you, Braxton. Let's see... Um, Here's one from Troy, Troy Jensen. Troy says pirates were really pirates were really terrorists of their time. Is that offensive? Don't start that, Troy. <laughs> this whole thing is stupid. The Washington Bullets changed their name because it lent a negative image to DC. They should have been called the uh, the Crooks. <clears throat> and my favorite one this morning from Pamela who sent me a breaking news flash. She says, the Washington Redskins have dropped the word Washington 
from their name because that's embarrassing. <laughs> that's true. That's funny. That's funny. If there's something embarrassing about the name Washington Redskins, it would be that Washington. Why would you want to be named after Washington? <laughs> Where you got a bunch of numbskulls up there. Speaking of which, I was listening to Michael. Were you? Was anybody listening? Who was it? Uh, Jimbo Hanna was interviewing. He was a Republican, just hammering Ted Cruz this morning. Did you hear that about quarter to seven? No, I did not. On America in the morning. By the way, I'm warming up to the 6 a.m. show, the America in the Morning with Jimbo Hannon. I think that's a good news show. They cover the news really well. Good lead-in for our show, I think. But um, I, I, it was some high-ranking Republican on with Bo Hannon, and I, 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 I caught the interview when I got back in the car, but I didn't hear who he was talking to. And he was, and whoever it was was saying that, um, you know, Ted Cruz and, and the crowd in Washington have created, you know, again, they basically saying what I was saying on Monday when we got into this with Tom Lamprey, that they didn't use the term end game, but he said they had no... They had no objective. There was no meaning when they started this government shutdown. Now they've painted themselves in a corner, and they're making all Republicans look bad. And I believe that. I'm sorry if you disagree with me, but I believe that. I think this is, you know, I, but, but worse than that to me is the fact of what I, what I said on Monday, which is they could be making hay right now against Obamacare because everybody's getting their... Uh, Getting their, their bill. By the way, we, we finally got a letter from our insurance carrier this week that Michael and I'm working on this. Michael, don't pass out in there because I know you got the family coverage. But um, if unless we take some action soon, our insurance is going up 56%. But I'm working on some options on that. 56%. So everybody who wanted to know how this was going to get paid for, we're getting the answer now. But with all these new ins uh, insurance premiums going up like crazy, the Republicans could be utilizing that to take back the Senate in 2014. Instead, they've taken that off the front page and put this stupid government shutdown on there. You want to argue with me, Michael? No, I'm just sick of all the socialism. It's time we stand up and tell him where he can take his insurance policies. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Let's stand up and say that. But why do something that's going to backfire in the media on the Republican Party, which is what this government shutdown has done? Yeah, but if we if we don't shut the government down, everything's going to go through. I mean, because but it's, they're it's not about going to shut the government down. They only. No, I agree. They're going to pay not. everybody back. I know. It's it, it, I know. it's it's just been it's a smoke stupid. And mirrors. It's been a stupid dog and pony show. Agreed. It's just a, a, a fruitless exercise. Tomorrow's deal Agreed. day, right? Don't, supposedly. Well, tomorrow's the day that the government, uh, you know, is supposed to default. Of course, you know, they, as Tom was saying, on you know, they can pay the interest on the long-term debt and keep it afloat. I don't know, man. They can't do that forever, though. Let's vote and kick them all out. Bring back term limits or start term limits. Mm. Lord you of know, mercy. We've got to change the Lord of mercy. Where is it going to end, though? I mean, at some point, somebody's got to acquiesce. I mean, I, you know, I did. Oh, they'll see cave. for headline in the news observer this morning: House budget vote canceled. I mean, you know, they, it's just it's just a bunch of then poops up there. I mean, I'm I'm beginning to I'm beginning to sound like what was the character on Saturday Night Live? Angry old man. Back in my day, John Kennedy was the president, and we liked it. By the way, when I was hammering John Kennedy yesterday for being a philandering, awful husband, someone called in and, and, and made my point. Did they not, Neil? Coach Carr took a call, and this guy was killing me, right? What was he saying? He was saying that I didn't know what I was talking about about Kennedy, and he didn't believe that Kennedy was cheating on his wife and all that? Yeah, he didn't like you. What? Uh, he didn't like what you were saying. He thought you was Democrat. He you thought know, I was a Democrat. Yeah, it was kind of confusing. He thought you was Democrat, oh, he, but you was banging. That's, oh, that you didn't tell me that. He he must not have taken his meds. Yeah, <laughs> he was. That was somebody off of his meds. Yeah, he didn't. He's like never that. listened to the show in his life. Obviously. <laughs> All right, eighteen after eight. We're gonna play uh, the Panthers trivia coming up. Let's take a break. News headlines coming up next with Clayton Bauman from WITN. And there's some other things going on in the community. There's an entrepreneur summit coming up at ECU we want to tell you about. And again, your chance to win from University Chop House this morning. A $25 gift card and, uh, you know, some of the best chops and steaks you'll eat anywhere. 
at University Chop House. And I got a $25 gift card for you this morning from uh, University Chop House and two tickets to uh, this weekend's Panthers-Rams game at Bank of America Stadium. Stay with us. All that coming up between now and 9 o'clock. We'll be right back. Starts now. Greenville Toyota is going to give you a payment vacation. Make no payments until 2014 on any new Toyota. Pick the new Toyota you want and don't make a payment until next year. Like the all new 2014 Corolla in stock and available now. Only $148 a month. Plus, every new Toyota comes with cover maintenance for life with a Greenville Toyota Advantage. Give Greenville Toyota just 15 minutes to lower your current car payment and then take a payment vacation with no payments till 2014. Unlock the best life has to offer for generations to come. Introducing the Legacy Membership exclusively at Ironwood Golf and Country Club. As a Legacy member, you'll not only enjoy all the benefits of an active, family-friendly lifestyle, your children and grandchildren will enjoy membership status as well. Belonging to Ironwood is remarkable. Sharing it with your entire family is even better. Become a Legacy member today, only at Ironwood Golf and Country Club. Golf at its finest, life at its fullest. Many people in Eastern North Carolina suffer from diabetes. The question is, can the disease be managed before it causes harm? Are there lifestyle changes that can help prevent it in the first place? And can a health system really make a difference? At Vitant Health, we are empowering people with tools and resources to detect and manage chronic disease. Can diabetes education and management help members of your family lead healthier lives? The answer is definitely yes. Accidents can cause serious injuries and create many problems in your everyday life. At the law firm of Hardy & Hardy, we work to protect your rights and help solve your problems. Attorneys Wayne and Charles Hardy help injured clients understand their rights and work diligently to obtain compensation for their damages and losses. Sharp negotiators, experienced litigators, compassionate attorneys. If you or a loved one has been injured in an accident, count on Hardy & Hardy. Protecting the rights of the seriously injured. Pepsi, born here, raised by Panthers fans everywhere. Raise your Pepsi for a chance to win the ultimate fan experience. See specially marked 18 packs or visit PepsiRaisedHere.com to learn more. Having a vision of what really matters is how we succeed. Keeping an eye on the ball, seeing all the things that we need. Focusing on the big picture, always striving to do what's right. Carolina Vision Care, we keep what's important inside. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. Twenty-three after eight. Let's check in now at the news desk. Get some local headlines from WITN. Here is weekend anchorman Clayton Bauman here in the studio with us this morning. Good morning, Clayton. Good morning, Henry. Got a couple headlines. The man deputies say was shot as he attempted to rob a convenience store at gunpoint here in the east. Is out of the hospital and behind bars. Twenty-two-year-old Joshua Chamberlain of Winterville is charged with armed robbery. And being held under a $250,000 bond, he was booked into the Pitt County Detention Center yesterday. Investigators say Chamberlain was shot October 8th at the Falkland Mini Mart in Pitt County. We're told he used an airsoft pistol to demand money, but the owner fired his gun. Chamberlain was struck, as was a friend of the owner who was also in the store. Both survived getting shot. Chamberlain was taken into custody just down the road from the convenience store. 
Pitt County deputies say they've identified the remains found in the woods last month that resulted in the arrest of three people. 59-year-old Anthony Labar of Ithaca, New York, is the person the medical examiner's office says died of blunt force trauma to the head and was left in the woods off Galloway Road near Grimesland. Investigators say Labar traveled from New York with Harold Drake and Akeisha Howard to Pitt County where Drake was, has family in Grifton. Deputies say a short time later, Labar was murdered. According to an affidavit, the Drake brothers confessed to killing Labar for money he got from a property sale. The confession came from behind the jail walls as all three were in the Pitt County Detention Center for breaking into a church, according to officials. The trio remains in jail under $2 million bonds. Greenville Mayor Alan Thomas and challenger Thomas Best squared off in their second debate, second one-on-one -on -one debate Tuesday at Brook Valley Country Club. Mayor Thomas said, quote, I ran for something two years ago. I said I was going to make changes in leadership and law enforcement and economic development as well as fiscal responsibility, and I've done that. I cut taxes here by $4.2 million while other cities were raising taxes, end quote. Thomas Best said, quote, I'll bring a little higher level maturity and civility to meetings. I'm not going to be supportive of other council members that are trying to argue. I'll be supportive of all council members and their constituents, but I'll work very hard to make sure we always have a civil council meeting. End quote. To watch the entirety of our interviews with each candidate, head to WITN.com. Donations from Firehouse Subs in Greenville are promoting fire safety for hundreds of homes here in Eastern Carolina. Firehouse Subs on Arlington Boulevard will be donating $5,100 to Greenville Fire Rescue and EMS to provide 300 new smoke alarms that will be installed and in homes across Greenville. The money was raised through recycling five-gallon pickle buckets, selling them to guests for $2 each. Interim Fire Rescue Chief Eric Griffin says just having smoke alarms isn't enough. He says maintenance is the key. Even though these smoke alarms are good for the next 10 years, he wants people to check them every month to make sure they're operating correctly. And finally, three Democratic congressmen want Republican Governor Pat McCrory to take a second look at halting North Carolina's welfare to work program as the federal shutdown continues. U.S. Representatives David Price, G.K. Butterfield and Mel Watt wrote Tuesday to McCrory asking him to reverse course on the program, usually paid with federal block funds that weren't reauthorized October 1st. The state said it is suspending processing work first applications Monday because there wasn't enough assurance the federal government would reimburse the state for payments once the shutdown ends. The letter says 49 other states apparently felt good enough about their chances. A federal official said Tuesday she wasn't aware of another state currently s suspending its welfare to work program. The state says people could miss work first benefits starting in November. Those are your WITN News headlines. We'll send it back to Henry. All right, very good. Let's check our weather update now. Here's Trent with that. Some clouds for tonight. Lows in the upper 50s for your Thursday. The cloudy skies continue throughout the day. Warm with a high near 80 degrees for tomorrow night. Mainly cloudy skies. A slight chance of a rain shower. Lows in the mid-60s. And for your Friday, again, partly cloudy skies throughout the day. Maybe a slight chance of a shower. 20% chance or so. Highs in the low 70s and lows in the mid-50s. News and weather this hour. A service of Homer. Homer Tire and the Homer Tire real estate team. If you need to sell your home, there is but one name. And it's very easy to remember because it's got your home right in it. Homer as in Homer Tire, and the telephone number even has your home in it, 758-H-O-M-E. That's 758-4663. That's the telephone number for the local office here of the real estate agent Homer Tire and the Homer Tire real estate team. And uh, Homer and Rachel and Jude and everybody over there, they are getting it done selling more homes than anybody in Greenville. And the reason is because they're more aggressive folks. And if you want to sell your home, you want an aggressive real estate agent it's no time to sit back when you've got to sell your home and uh, get the best dollar for it. And uh, I can tell you, I've been through the program. I've sat in the conference room, gone through the system with Homer, and he's the best. You've just got to call him. It's 758-H-O-M-E. And, of course, uh, he's got a couple of fail-safes for you. You can fire him at any time and pay him nothing. But the thing you're going to love is the Homer Tire guarantee, is especially if you've got to get out of town fast, if you've been transferred or you have to move fast for any reason. Homer will buy the home from you himself if he does not sell it on time and for the right price. Call Homer Tire, 758-H-O-M-E. Tell him the big hen sent you over there. And us guaranteed sell NC. Those are the... Those are the, uh, the, 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 the ways to catch him. Of course, that's the website, and they've got testimonials on the website. Homer Tire and the Homer Tire real estate team. 
It's got an interesting email. We're talking about Bob Costas and the, the Redskins thing, and he got off on the gun control thing. And, and I know uh, who's the guy on CNN? Piers Morgan that's been going crazy about the the the, uh, the murder rate in the United States with guns. And listen to this, Joe Mavretic, our buddy, who is the former Democratic Speaker of the House in North Carolina, just uh, email me this: The United States does indeed rank third in the entire world in murders. However, if you take out Chicago, Detroit, Washington D.C., and New Orleans. The United States drops to the bottom of the list, actually fourth from the bottom for murders of all countries in the entire world. All four cities are controlled by Democrats and have been for decades, and all four cities have the toughest gun control laws in the country. How about them apples? Interesting. From a Democrat, by the way, who pointed that out. One other point I wanted to make, too, that we hadn't gotten to this morning. I knew this last week, and it was uh, kind of on the down low, and um, actually had a conversation with Tom Tillis about it yesterday. That uh, kind of, But it's, it ended up in the newspaper this morning, so I guess it's now widely known. A little bit of a shock in the power structure of the North Carolina House of Representatives that leaves a big hole right now. Tom Tillis, of course, leaving the House after this upcoming short session to run for United States Senate this year. And so a lot of people thought that the uh, odds-on favorite to become the Speaker of the House when Tom Tillis leaves would be Representative Ruth Samuelson from Charlotte, who is the House Majority Leader and the Caucus Leader, and she's raised a lot of money for House folks and that kind of thing. She has now officially announced that she is not going to run for re-election. Not, not run for re-election to the House of Representatives, not just for the House, for the Speaker of the House. She's not running for the House. So she's going to focus on other things, including faith and family and some other business opportunities. And uh, so a little bit of a shocker, if you hadn't heard that news, if you follow politics in North Carolina, Ruth Samuelson, who everybody thought would it, it, uh, basically assume to be the number two person in the House of Representatives underneath uh, Tom Tillis, announcing this morning in the Charlotte Observer that she will not run for re-election to the House. Boy, does that throw the whole Speaker of the House race wide open. Now you're going to uh, see people jockeying for position like crazy in the House of Representatives, and you're going to see some new faces emerging in uh, North Carolina politics out of the House of Representatives. And, you know, how does that affect the uh, Republican Party, too? It's going to be interesting to see. And I'll say this. If um, if Phil Berger was boss hog before, he now <laughs> you think Mark Bassanite was powerful when he was the uh, leader of the Senate. Wow. This is going to be interesting. All right, we'll take a break and come back. There's an interesting program coming up for entrepreneurs at uh, East Carolina. Are you an entrepreneur? Come back and talk about that with some of my friends from ECU right after this. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company will deliver a storage unit to your home or business today. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile storage units 8x15 or 8x10 delivered to your site. If you are remodeling your home or office or need to store merchandise and inventory at your business, you need to call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. We deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy and there's no need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people you know. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage is located in Pitt County on Beast Oaks Road. It's a well-secured facility with a living manager. Fixed units range from 5 feet by 10 feet to 40 feet by 40 feet. We store boats, cars, anything you need. We are Pirate Supporting Pirates. Call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage today at 321-2300. That's 321-2300. Unsafe drivers are all around you, speeding, texting, doing things that cause accidents and result in serious injury. At Hardy & Hardy, we think those drivers and their insurance companies should be held responsible. We provide aggressive representation in and out of the courtroom, fighting for our clients' compensation for medical bills, lost wages, pain and suffering, and permanent injuries. Count on Hardy & Hardy, protecting the rights of the seriously injured. This is the spot where 50 years ago, pirates came together to build a stadium. 
where 50,000 screaming fans cheer their team to victory. Where cannons roar to mark each score. You can paint this one purple. Where pirate football lives on. This is the spot you need to be this fall. Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. For tickets, visit ecupirates.com. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. All right, coming up in just a few minutes, uh, your chance to win those Carolina Panthers tickets from uh, University Chop House. Got two tickets. We got Panthers trivia for you this morning. So you Panthers fans, stand by. In just about 10 minutes, we're going to give you a chance to call in and win two tickets to this weekend's game with the Panthers and the St. Louis Rams at Bank of America Stadium. Uh, One o'clock kickoff in Charlotte. So that's coming up courtesy of a University Chop House. Right now, though, I want to tell you about uh, one of my favorite parts of ECU and one of my favorite people at, e- at ECU is here, uh, Marty Hackney, who is the director of ECU's Entrepreneurial Initiative. Good morning. Good morning. Harry. How are you? And you brought Taylor Kern with you. Taylor is a graduate intern of the Entrepreneurial Initiative, and she's uh, getting her MBA at ECU, and she and I have been um, communicating by email this week, and I told you, Marty, she clearly doesn't know much about my show because she... <laughs> She emailed me yesterday and said, what kind of questions are you going to ask? And I said, I have no idea. <laughs> you think, you think we prepare this show? <laughs> I'm wrong? sorry. How are you? It's nice I'll to meet you. I'll be ready next time. Nice I'll to know. meet you. How are me you? Me too. Good. So you, you can tell she's a graduate student. She want, you know, She's ha- actually doing preparation and those kind of things. I'm yeah. actually, yeah, you know, I try a little bit sometimes. Yeah. It's good to see you both. Thank you. Thank you for having um, us. I know you've got a summit coming up that you want to talk about, but Marty, for people who don't know, they're, 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 you've been on the show, but it's been a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is the, your your uh, department over at ECU is one of the most impressive things I think we do in terms of outreach and and economic development and things like that, and, and for the economy of Eastern North Carolina. Tell people about the entrepreneurship initiative at ECU and what you guys, what's your mission, and how do you go about it and that kind of thing. Um, our mission is threefold. Number one is to educate entrepreneurs and help them through the commercialization process. And then we have an investor network that helps fund these entrepreneurs through that commercialization phase. And then um, finally, we work with both spin-ins and spin-outs. So we work with students within the university, faculty with new products to create new businesses, as well as external um, throughout the community. But what we do, different from other counselors, is we specialize in technology uh, commercialization. So it has to be an innovation that's going to change an industry. Mm-hmm. And then that way we begin working with it. We call them emerging emerging technologies or mm-hmm. disruptive technologies. Right. So if I had an idea for a business... Which which might lead into the to the summit, right? Yeah. If I had an idea for an entrepreneur, if I had this, if I'm an entrepreneur, I got this idea and I wanna, I want to develop it. I, I could come to you and not only get uh, help developing my idea, but maybe even reach out to investors mm-hmm. and get a help with a business plan and the whole nine yards. Is that what this <laughs> summit upcoming is about? The summit is a little bit more about um, learning from people who have already. Um, gone through their businesses and have experience. It's not so much what we do with the entrepreneurial initiative is help people with doing their business plans and doing their market analyses and building their businesses. Um, the summit itself is more about learning 
um, what to do from from. I here. got you. So you're going to bring in people who've been successful. Absolutely. And, all right, and and this summit is coming up. When when is the summit? October the 29th, Tuesday. Starts at 8.30 in the morning and goes to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. All right, now, who should come to the – if people are listening, I've got this great idea, I need some help, I want to hear, I want to learn from people who've done it, who, who's, who should come to this event? Anybody that's interested in small business growth because it covers – um, startup and commercialization to growing your business, as well as investors that are want to learn more, meet entrepreneurs and network and find um, the counseling services that are available locally. And uh, and Taylor, tell, talk about some of the people that are going to be on the. Uh Who's going to be be up there that you'll be able to learn from at this thing? Um, well, our keynote speaker is Dave Burgess, who is an angel investor and an author and very well known for um, building his two companies that he now is a managing managing partner of. Um, and then we also have... He's not, he's not local, right? No. no. Yeah, he, yeah. He's from California. Okay. Um, and then we have Phil Hodges as our... Um, who is local. Yes. yes. You talk about a, a local <laughs> entrepreneurial success story. That's unbelievable. I'm sorry to mean to interrupt. No, you. you're fine. You're I fine. I get excited when we I'm have, here. We have so many speakers, I can't possibly get through all of them, anyways. <laughs> and Phil, Phil, of course, is it was one of the people who developed the local company Metrics, mm -hmm. which has just spun off, as you or sp spun out. Is that what mm -hmm. you would say? That's what, they absolutely. Just, we call it an exit. Yeah. So, what I call it was a cash out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was a. Phil, if you're listening, pardon me. It was a nice little cash out for Phil and his investors. And he made um, quite a few millionaires in our community yes, that did. now hopefully will turn around and invest in new entrepreneurs yeah. and will grow more companies. Right. All right. So, Phil Hodges, you'll be able to hear Phil's story and talk Absolutely. about how metrics mm -hmm. became metrics. And, uh, you know, I remember when metrics started. And I remember, I, and I met Phil, and, I, and he was telling me what they were doing. And I'm like, oh, that's a nice little company. And the, <laughs> what do they just sell for? One hundred and twenty million dollars. Yeah, nice. Wow. Nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. Impressive. A nice little company. All right. Okay. What? Who else is going to be there? Anybody else you want to talk about? Um, Tracy Tutin is also one of our uh, key speakers. She's a social media expert and a professor at ECU. Okay. Great. And she'll be doing um, her own session on social media in the morning, as well as a panel in the afternoon. So this is October 29th. Where will it be on campus? At the Greenville Hilton. Oh, at the Hilton. At okay. the Hilton. And what's the cost? Seventy-five dollars up wow. until Thursday afternoon, and then it goes up to ninety. That's a heck of a deal. That is a great mm -hmm. deal. Yeah, and does is, is that include lunch and the whole? That deal? includes breakfast and lunch. Okay, good. And refreshments all day. Very good. And at eight thirty to three, you say? At eight thirty to three. Eight thirty to three. How do people sign up, Taylor? They can go to nceast.org forward slash twenty thirteen e summit. And they can register there, or they can go to our website, which is eshipsummit.com, and mm -hmm. they can follow a link from there to register. Now, are you a burgeoning entrepreneur yourself? I'm not. You're not? Um, what, what I'm is, learning what is a your, lot what right is, now. What is your career path? What, where are we going after the MBA degree? I'm going into marketing. Are you? Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to be on Wall Street or Madison Avenue? Or, Absolutely. Do you? Yeah. No kidding. How about that? Yeah. The, these students that are coming up, I don't worry about yeah. our next generation. Right. They're, they're very bright. They're fun to be around. And uh, they have a gleam in their eye. You know, you're right about that. You're right about that. I mean, you know, people who are worried about the next generation need to spend a little time on a college campus. <laughs> they really do. I do worry about some of their some of their attitudes toward things. But, but you know, but they're bright. They're smart. And they're doing some great stuff. They're doing some great stuff. And I'm sure you're in that category. Well, thank you. The bright category. Yeah. <laughs> All right, very good. So um, anything else you want to plug? Is that pretty much talk about it? What else? Um, the only other plug I want to give is um, for Dave Burkus. Dave Burkus is a nationally renowned speaker. I'm sorry I didn't recognize that name. I was um, it will. Yeah. It, it would typically cost you five hundred dollars to be able to hear Dave Burkus speak. Um, and, and essentially, what is his message? I mean, is there is there anything specific? He he he's been successful. Or? Yeah, he was an entrepreneur at sixteen years old. Wow. He paid his own way through college on his own uh, as an entrepreneur. He's invested in over eighty companies. He has a ninety-seven percent annual return on his own investments. Good Lord. I know. We, yeah. we, we think 10% is great in the stock market. Yeah. He's a 97% annual return. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, he's, a, he's 
uh, amazingly successful. Um, he he was just awarded International Small Venture Capitalist of the Year. Um, wow. This is it's really and you get once to hear in this a lifetime. Guy make a presentation for seventy five bucks. That's yeah. yeah. And and the and Phil Hodges and the rest of the uh, day as well. That's that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Hope we'll, hopefully, we'll see you there. You know, I might uh, I might try to clear my count. What day of the week is that? That's a Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. Good. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, give us the sign up information again, Taylor, so people can find you. You can go to eshipsummit.com and follow the link there, or you can go to nceast.org forward slash 2013 East Summit. All right. Very good. Good to see you both. Thank you, Henry. Marty, it's always great to see you. Marty and I just had lunch with the Secretary of Commerce, had a great lunch on campus. She's impressive. She is impressive. She is very impressive. Uh, Secretary Decker, who's doing some good things, I think. So nice to see you again, and nice to meet you, Taylor. And you. Good luck to, uh, good luck to you with the Entrepreneurial Summit coming up uh, on the 29th. All right, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's take a break. Uh, let's open up the phone lines right now. Want to? <coughs> Pardon me. We'll uh, do the uh, Panthers trivia when we come back. 561-8255. 561-8255. Call us right now. The uh, first person to get my trivia question correct from uh, from uh, the University Chop House this morning. Uh, it's a Panthers trivia question. We'll get two tickets to uh, Sunday's game with the Panthers and the St. Louis Rams. And... We'll throw in a $25 gift card to University Chop House. Call us right now. We'll be right back with Panthers Trivia. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. Summer may be over, but vacation time starts now. Greenville Toyota is going to give you a payment vacation. Make no payments until 2014 on any new Toyota. Pick the new Toyota you want and don't make a payment until next year. Like the all-new 2014 Corolla in stock and available now. Only $148 a month. Plus, every new Toyota comes with cover maintenance for life with the Greenville Toyota Advantage. Give Greenville Toyota just 15 minutes to lower your current car payment and then take a payment vacation with no payments till 2014. This is the spot where 50 years ago, Pirates came together to build a stadium. Where 50,000 screaming fans cheer their team to victory. Where cannons roar to mark each score. You can paint this one purple. Where Pirate football lives on. This is the spot you need to be this fall. Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. For tickets, visit ecupirates.com. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. Pepsi, born here, raised by Panthers fans everywhere. Raise your Pepsi for a chance to win the ultimate fan experience. See specially marked 18 packs or visit PepsiRaiseHere.com to learn more. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco.
All right, here we go. Panthers trivia here on 103.7 WTIB. And are our lines jammed? Have we got any room? You can try if you want, 561-8255. And uh, we're going to give you two tickets to the Carolina Panthers game this Sunday in Charlotte, courtesy of University Chop House, where McGee was on uh, Friday night. You, so you ended up not getting dinner Friday night. You no, know, not getting dinner, but I can you know, tell you. You know what the uh, you know you know what you need to try over there is that what's that? Uh, they have a great chicken dish that's kind of encrusted with uh, almonds and stuff. Oh, that thing is good. I tell you, their specials last week they had a, a great special for an appetizer in black and blue scallops and a cowboy. It was a cowboy T bone. In the bone ribeye is what they called it, mm-hmm. I believe, which was also a special. It was a, it was, it, it was a bigger than a ribeye. It was yeah. a ribeye and a. Mm-hmm. So what's the T bone? Is you know, one side is the, uh, what is it? One side is the ribeye and the other side is the sirloin or something. I believe that's it, but don't quote me. But, so it must have been a big steak. The Either steaks way, and good. the chops are great over there. All right, let's go to the phones and Ray. Good morning, Ray. How are you? Good morning, great. All right, Ray, you a Panthers fan? Uh, yeah. All right. If you get this right, you get two tickets, courtesy of University Chop House, to the uh, to the to the Rams game at Bank of America Stadium, one o'clock this uh, this coming Sunday. And Tom over at the Chop House is going to throw in two uh, a twenty five dollar gift card for you to the University Chop House. Are you ready? Sounds great. All right. The current starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers is Cam Newton. Superman. The first year that the Panthers were a, an NFL team was 1995. That year, there were two different quarterbacks who started for the Carolina Panthers. One of them, it would be too easy just to ask this. <laughs> One of them was Kerry Collins. He started 13 games that year. Who was the other guy who started three games at quarterback for the Panthers in their first year in 1995. Mm, that's a hard one. <laughs> that's going to that's gonna take a little thinking. Yeah. No Kerry, hint? Well, yeah, he was a quarterback. <laughs> uh, who, was, who was he? First, first starting quarterback, first year in 1995, first year the Panthers were in Charlotte. Kerry Collins started 13 games at quarterback, and this person started three games. At quarterback, uh, I don't know. Kerry Collins, the only one I remember. All right, good, good. Uh, uh, thanks for calling. Try next week, and maybe we'll get you get you some tickets. Let's go to Chris. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Great. How are you? All right. Did you hear the question? I did. I did. And All I'll right. take a stab in the dark. Rodney right. Pete. Rodney Pete is. Not correct. Good guess, though. Oh. That's a good guess. Not correct. Rodney Pete actually didn't start a game for the for the Panthers until 2002. Now, he might have been on the uh, he might have been on the the roster, but thank you, Chris. That'll open up a line right, at five six one eight two five five. Who was who was the starting quarterback for the Panthers the first year? All right, Bethany. Good morning, Bethany. Good morning, Henry. Is this Bethany Bradshaw? Yes, it the is. The author, the sports author. I don't know if you're eligible for this. <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna get this, aren't you? I think so. Who was it? Frank Reich. Yes, Frank Reich. <laughs> Remember, he played at the University of Maryland. Yes, and Frank, he played for the Bills. Y- yes, he did. He did play for the Bills. Frank Reich started three games for the Carolina Panthers, and I can't remember what was the situation. Did Collins get hurt? I think he got hurt late in the season. I think so. And uh, he was always kind of a veteran backup, but yeah, he came in. So Reich, uh, Reich was um, uh, he was kind of a veteran guy. He'd already been in the league about ten years. He played for the Bills, the pa- the uh, Jets, the the Detroit Lions, and uh, he's currently a coach, by the way, in uh-huh. the in the NFL. He's uh, he's currently with the uh, San Diego Chargers. He's the quarterback's coach for the San Diego Chargers. Frank I Reich. Didn't know that. Yeah, that's a tough one. All right, Bethany, congratulations. Bethany Bradshaw is the winner. Bethany, you got Thank a twenty-five dollar gift card to the University Chop House. Perfect. And tomorrow's uh, my anniversary. When so is your anniversary? When is that? Tomorrow. Oh tomorrow. man, there you go. Yeah. Go out there and enjoy it uh, over there at the uh, at the University Chop House tomorrow, and uh, and also two tickets for Sunday's game with the Rams and the Panthers. Courtesy of University Chop House. All right, Bethany, hang on, and Michael will tell you how to get all that. All right, thanks. All right, Bethany Brasher, our Panthers winner this morning. All Pretty right. good. 
That'll transition us right into some sports. Yeah. What else you got in sports this morning, Mike? Yeah, uh, and yeah. last night, Major League Baseball, the Cardinals over the Dodgers 4-2 to two to win game four of the NLCS. That moves the Cardinals within one win of their 19th all-time World Series appearance. Over in the American League Championship Series, the Red Sox beat the Tigers 1-0 to take a two games to one lead in the ALCS. A trio of East Carolina men's basketball games have been picked up for local TV coverage. ECU's December 1st matchup with UNC Wilmington. The Conference USA home opener against O. ODU on the 11th of January and a home game against Southern Miss on January 25th will be televised throughout Eastern North Carolina on WITN game times for those games have been adjusted to, accom to accommodate those broadcasts. And some college football news and not good news as the injury bug is not only biting ECU but also has bit in, bitten NC State as the head coach Dave Dorn announced that redshirt senior safety Jarvis Bird has a torn ACL. He will miss the remainder of the season for the Wolfpack. Bird was injured during the Wolfpack's uh, game at Wake Forest on October the 5th. All right, uh, that is our sports update brought to you by Tab Premium Built Homes. And I mentioned this yesterday, if you didn't hear the news, Tab Premium Built Homes has just opened a second office in Greenville. They're calling it the, um, uh, the, the Southern Living House Plan Resource Center because, as you know, Southern Living uh, designates, I think, 100 builders in the country and the only builder in North Carolina with the designation for Southern Living, Tab premium built homes. They're open right now. You can go in and see all the Southern Living plans and all the great uh, uh, opportunities they have for you to plan your next home or just go in there and get some uh, decorating ideas. They'd love to see you stop in and see them. They're right next door to Finelli's in the Lindale shops on Red Banks Road. It's just to the, the first little uh, office uh, area right next door to Finelli's. So, Stop in there and see Andy Bayless. You know, we've talked about Andy for years. He's the guy. Uh, Tab is the uh, company that built uh, the, uh, the, all the, the high-level homes that you've heard about, including Nicholas Sparks and Curtis Strange. But don't think that they can't build you a uh, affordable home. They, their homes start in the 300s. <coughs> Pardon me. And uh, <clears throat> Tab is the, um, the uh, uh, Tab-built homes is the area's only Southern Living home builder. And only 100 in the entire United States, as I said. And if you choose Tab to be your builder and use a Southern Living house plan, you receive the plans for free. That alone will save you thousands. Stop in and see Tab Premium Built Homes and their new office. It is the Southern Living Resource House Plan Resource Center right here in Greenville. You'll discover why people always say that Tab is quality. All right, we're done for the day. A uh, couple of reminders. Don't forget our pregame show coming up at KFC on Greenville Boulevard, Greenville Boulevard and Mosley Drive, 4 o'clock Friday afternoon, the Greenville Toyota postgame show after the game on 94.3, and our Meet the Candidates event with a free breakfast for everybody at Rep Express on Friday morning from 7 to 9. And we'll see you back here. Eastern North Carolina's best selection of used cars and trucks is at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep in Greenville. The great folks at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep will put you in a quality pre-owned vehicle for as low as $99 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep will pay top dollar for your trade. Right now, no matter the condition, acres of sedans, minivans, SUVs, and trucks, you won't find a better deal on a used car anywhere. So bring in your car and trade up to a quality pre-owned vehicle. And remember... East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep will pay more for your trade than anyone. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company will deliver a storage unit to your home or business today. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile storage units 8x15 or 8x10 delivered to your site. If you are remodeling your home or office or need to store merchandise and inventory at your business, you need to call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. We deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy and there's no need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people you know. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage is located in Pitt County on B. Stokes Road. It's a well-secured facility with a living manager. Fixed units range from 5 feet by 10 feet to 40 feet by 40 feet. We store boats, cars, anything you need. We are Pirate Supporting Pirates. Call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage today at 321-2300. That's 321-2300.
you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. This is the spot where 50 years ago, Pirates came together to build a stadium. Where 50,000 screaming fans cheer their team to victory. Where cannons roar to mark each score. You can paint this one purple. Where Pirate football lives on. This is the spot you need to be this fall. Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. For tickets, visit ecupirates.com. Don't miss the Shaw Floors You Save We Give sale. You save up to $500 on select Shaw flooring, like carpet, hardwood, and more. We give to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital to help them find cures and save children. Hurry, event ends November 18th. Contact Jason Boyd today at Boyd's Carpet, 115C Tire Tower Road in Winterville. Call 321-7066. Station. 